Hey there! Our goal in this video is to examine what exactly a mineral is and take a look at what criteria must be met for a substance to be considered a mineral. So let's dive right in. We'll start with the question, what are minerals? In the most basic sense, minerals are the building blocks of rocks. They are what make up the rocks that we find on the surface of the Earth, throughout the solar system, and throughout the universe. Let's take a look at a rock. This is an igneous rock known as diorite. And what probably jumps out at you are all the different speckles of color, the dark grays, the whites, the orange. And what those are are actual mineral crystals. The rock diorite contains mineral crystals of plagiaclase, feldspar, biotite, mica, amphibole, quartz, and others. And so when we're talking about minerals, let's keep in mind that they are what make up the rocks on the surface of the Earth. Now, there are many, many minerals that exist on Earth. Here are some of the more common minerals. Some of these you may have heard of, including things like quartz and garnet, magnetite, and sulfur. Minerals have a lot of uses, and we come across them, whether we know it or not, in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, here are some of the more common uses. Gypsum is used in drywall, and that makes up the walls around us in most buildings. Uh, graphite is actually used to color with pencils. When you see that dark bit of pencil, what we call pencil lead, is actually the mineral graphite. We even use minerals for other things like jewelry, like this amethyst, which is a variety of quartz, can be used in jewelry, amongst other things. So minerals are very important to us on Earth. But what is it that actually makes a mineral a mineral? Well, to be considered a mineral, a substance has to meet five specific criteria. And let's run through those criteria now. The first criteria is that the substance must exist as a solid under normal conditions on Earth. Liquids and gases are not considered minerals. Number two, the substance must be naturally occurring on Earth. So anything that's man-made in a laboratory or a factory cannot be considered a mineral. Number three, the substance must be inorganic, meaning it's not living and it's not made directly from living things. Now, this is a, a point that some people may argue. Um, there are certain substances on Earth that are actually created by living things, uh, examples being certain shells of sea creatures that are considered minerals. But generally speaking, we're looking for inorganic substances. Number four, the substance must have a fixed chemical formula. It has to be made of a specific combination of elements, and that's going to be the same for each occurrence of that mineral. And finally, number five, the atoms that make up the substance must be arranged in a specific structure that's unique to that mineral. So with those five things in mind, uh, let's ask this question. Is this a mineral? We're going to look at a variety of things, and I want you to keep in mind those criteria. Solid, naturally occurring, inorganic, with a fixed chemical formula and a specific atomic structure. So here's our first one to take a look at. Uh, this is liquid mercury. So liquid mercury, if we look at our checklist here, uh, right off the bat, it cannot be considered a mineral because it's not a solid. So liquid mercury is not a mineral. What about this? This is a chunk of an epoxy resin, a crystal. It certainly looks like a mineral. Uh, is it a solid? Yes. But is it naturally occurring? And the answer to that is no. Epoxy resin is a man-made material, and therefore this cannot be considered a mineral. What about this? This is bituminous coal, uh, the kind of coal that you might burn in a, in a fireplace or something like that. Um, it was used for heating for a long time and is still used in a lot of electric plants. Um, now, if you don't know much about bituminous coal, it is a sedimentary rock and it is composed of organic material. So it's made of compacted plant remains that, that are squashed together over many, many thousands of years. Um, and so if we go to our checklist, is it a solid? Yes. Is it naturally occurring? Absolutely. Is it inorganic? No. Because it's made of plant remains, it's actually an organic material. And therefore, according to our criteria, it cannot be considered a mineral. What about this? This is that igneous rock diorite that we were talking about earlier. Well, it's certainly a solid, and it's found in nature. It's not man-made, um, and it is uh, certainly not organic in any sense. Um, 
But the problem is, it doesn't have a fixed chemical formula. While, while most varieties of diorite have the same minerals that make them up, it does vary. You'll get some diorite that has a lot of one particular substance and less of another. Uh, and so it does not have that fixed chemical formula that we're looking for for something to be considered a mineral. Uh, in fact, diorite is an igneous rock, and it's composed of many minerals that have been intergrown together. What about this? This is a rough or a raw diamond. Now, it's certainly solid. It's found in nature. Uh, it is inorganic. It is not made by uh, any living things. Um, it has a fixed chemical formula. It's made of carbon, and it has a very specific atomic structure. And so diamond absolutely is a mineral. Now, let's do one more. Ice. Now, this is kind of a funny one. Uh, right off the bat, most people don't consider ice to be a mineral. Um, but let's go through our criteria. It's certainly a solid. Uh, there's a little bit of a question mark there, though, because, uh, you know, remember, it has to be solid under normal conditions on Earth. And the fact is, much of the Earth uh, is actually too warm for solid ice to exist all the time. So that's kind of a question mark, but there are certainly places on Earth where we do have ice. Uh, water is frozen throughout the year. So that one could go either way. It's definitely naturally occurring. It is inorganic. It has a fixed chemical formula, H2O and it has a very specific atomic structure. And so according to our criteria, you could make the argument that ice is in fact a mineral. So there are some examples of how you would look at different substances to determine if they are in fact minerals or not. There's one more thing I want to address here, and that is this, this last thing, this idea of a specific atomic structure. So what this is referring to is the way the atoms within the substance are arranged with each other. Um, and it's important for you to know that all physical properties of a mineral, so when we talk about how uh, the color of the mineral, how hard it is, how it breaks apart, how shiny it is, all of the physical properties of the minerals that we look at, they are caused by, or rather the result of the internal arrangement of atoms. So if I bring back my examples here, you notice minerals come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, etc. And it's important to know that the reason they look the way they do is because of how those atoms are arranged inside. I want to give you one really interesting example of that, and that's to look at these two minerals. We have diamond and we have graphite. Now, interestingly, they're actually both composed of the same element. They're both made of carbon. But if you were to zoom way in and actually look at those carbon atoms, the carbon within the diamond is arranged in this complex hexagonal structure, while the carbon within the graphite is arranged into these long sheets of atoms. And this is a fundamental difference between these two minerals. And you can actually see the results of this in the minerals themselves. Diamond is one of the hardest minerals known to man, and graphite on the other hand, is very soft. You can actually break it apart with your finger. So that internal arrangement of atoms is really important when talking about minerals. So let's just sum this up. Here are some of the key ideas. Minerals, they are the building blocks of rocks. To be considered a mineral, they have to be solid, naturally occurring, inorganic, having a specific chemical composition and a specific atomic arrangement. Finally, all of the mineral's physical characteristics, those are the result of how those atoms within it are arranged. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the characteristics of minerals and how we can take a mineral sample and identify it.